the show. This video is called Our Dad Garage. He's my dad. Yeah! Also, my two squiggly. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hey, it's JD. We had a good morning this morning. We went out to Carson Coffee in Franklin. It's a beautiful day. This is the first Saturday of March in 2021. It was a little bit cold. Um, wore our jackets, still got a little bit chilly. Met some great folks. Took the Bel Air out. Hang on a second, I'm getting a low battery. Now we're good. I'll have to put this on the charger. But I uh, got the Bel Air back in the shop. Uh, she did good, you know, maiden voyage of 20. Uh, 21, but we had a good time. Uh, drank a bunch of coffee, had to go pee, made it to the McDonald's. Everything's good. There's the body of the new 53 that we're going to build. And then I thought I'd show you this today. Uh, I've got the cars moved around out here in the driveway. Uh, there's the town and country that is dead, uh, waiting on a new Tipham and maybe even a new computer to go in that. And then that sucker's going to get sold. It'll make somebody else a great car. Uh, but this is the frame of the 53, uh, the new one that we're working on. That is a T5 transmission that I purchased from a guy named Chris, Chris Miller in uh, Murfreesboro. Great dude. Had a good time meeting him this week. And then I met another guy named Bill, Billy, Billy Don, and he sold me the rear end out of a 1974 Nova with a 273 gear. Drum brakes, it's got new brake pads, awesome. So you're looking at $100 for the rear end out of that 74 Nova, and one, $350 for a really good five-speed transmission. That transmission came out of a uh, mid-90s, I believe a 95 is what he told me, maybe a 92. A Chevy S10 pickup truck, it has got the gear shifter in the rear position, sometimes, or in the forward position, Sometimes you'll find these and the gear shift is in the rear position and you cannot put that transmission in a seat with bench seats or in a car with bench seats because the shifter is in the way. Uh, there's not that many of the S10s that came with the shifter in the in the forward position there, but some of those bench seat uh, S10s did. So that's the five speed, it's a T5. It's the same transmission they put in Mustang GTs, I believe. Uh, basically, the only difference would be out here, the, uh, the plate goes up to the bell housing and then i found online back to me then i found online uh, this and it arrived today and that's why we're out here today to kind of start mocking this thing up this is a plate a little three quarter inch plate that's going to go right here between the transmission and the bell housing and it's going to mate the t5 transmission the five speed to that motor now the other thing is in a 1953 Chevrolet, this is called a torque tube. It's not a drive shaft. Looks like a drive shaft, but it's not a drive shaft. This does not rotate. Uh, if you'll see here, it's got a coupling here, and there's an actual tube inside there that actually does the rotation. So I have to change. If you decide you're going to change your transmission in a 1953 or 54 Chevrolet, and I think the 49s uh, through 53s were this way, uh, you have to change that to a drive shaft car and then you'll have to get a new rear end. So most of this will come out, but that allows me now, will allow me to have a five speed transmission, which will make it very uh, drivable instead of that old three speed on the tree. Now it's gonna be a five speed on the floor, uh, really cool. So we're gonna start the process of taking out that transmission, that torque tube and that rear end and making room for the new ones. Hey, the really cool thing is uh, Billy, the guy I bought the uh, the guy I bought the rear end from. This is kind of how car people are. Car people are just cool. Billy had a drive shaft right here from a 1955 Chevrolet. And if my math is correct, and it's probably not, but if it is, uh, that drive shaft will pretty much line up in there. I believe it'll be very close. If not, Chris told me he can cut drive shafts. Uh, and has made several itself instead of buying a new one. So if you get online and you buy a drive shaft like I did for that car, uh, the drive shaft there I had made, um, and it's not anything special. It's not like an aluminum drive shaft or anything like that. It's just a basic steel drive shaft, $450 plus shipping. I mean, they're expensive. It's just steel. It's no moving parts, really. 
Um, so, you know, that'll save quite a bit of money. But that's what we're going to work on today. Uh, that's the update. I'm going to set the camera up and uh, take some video and see how far we get. All right, folks. So the first thing I did was I put it up on these jack stands, jacked it up with my little cheapo jack. And I put it up in these jack stands, get the back wheels off the ground, remove the back tires. And I'm going to work on uh, taking those U-bolts uh, loose from that leaf, the, from the uh, leaf springs there, those shackles. Uh, and then I will slide. Uh, actually, then we're going to release uh, these pin, these uh, retaining bolts here on the outside. And I think that torque tube will then slide out of there as you uh, slide the uh, axle back on the leaf spring. I believe it will release the torque tube then. That's my thinking. So uh, the next phase is we will release uh, or loosen these uh, the bolts that hold to the leaf springs there. Uh, one thing I will say is on the bottom of the torque tube, under here, this is where the spring for the parking brake uh, is, and the parking brake works wonderful. Uh, so, you know, as you as you hit the parking brake, you engage it, and that thing tightens up, and it looks great. That mechanism's there. So I'm going to have to figure out something on that spring, uh, because I do want to use the original parking brake. Um, so we won't remove all of that, but this hardware, all of this mounting stuff in here will come out. Uh, you'll see that in the next video. All right, well, I've released the uh, rear axle from the leaf springs. You can see on both sides floating there. I've got it jacked up on my jack there to, to uh, relieve the tension. Because of the angle here, if you'll jack that guy up, it will slide out. Now I'm going to uh, softly, oh, uh, don't forget, you've got to release that spring or it'll hold it. Uh, I did that just a minute ago, uh, release the spring. Um, now as, as I tap that with the hammer, uh, I'm gonna use a little sledge with a, with a rubber mallet between it. Uh, that's gonna slide this torque tube out. Um, and I'm actually gonna put a strap underneath here to catch the end of that torque tube because I'm probably gonna sell that and I sure don't wanna booger up the end of it. So I'll put a strap under here to catch it and uh, we'll just keep sliding it out until we drop the front end out. Okay, now I have released all the brake lines. I've got this set up to catch my tor torque tube when it comes out. I've got a ratchet strap on the back. I'm just gonna pull it out. Okay, there's one less torque tube.
one way to get it out. I did have to take the, uh, the rear shackle off of that leaf spring. I thought I could pass it through without it, but geometric shapes didn't work out. Um, but now we've got the torque tube and the rear uh, axles out. And we'll work on, uh, you can't see this, but now we'll start to work on the uh, transmission uh, up to the bell housing and then we'll have this thing cleaned up and we're ready to start mounting some things. That's cool. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but I've got the, uh, the new Nova uh, rear end kind of put underneath this leaf spring over here. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and just set it in place and then I can do some markup with it. Uh, I'll know what I need to weld or how I need to modify those plates a little bit better just by looking at it in real space. So I'm just gonna attach that. Now here's a little trick I've done before. I don't know if you can tell what's going on in this shot, but um, I've got a stack of bricks down here. So I've got my rear suspended with that and I've got the leaf spring brought back up. You're gonna have to stretch this leaf spring to get it back in that shackle. And a, a cool way to do it is to just bring in some bricks and you got to get it just in the right spot but when you do you can put just enough pressure on it that's almost in the right spot i'm going to make a little bit more adjustments on that but if you will stack your bricks up here you can get your uh, rear suspension mounted and you can get this rear shackle uh, the, the leaf spring's got to spray out in order to do that. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, best I can, I'll show you what I did. So I uh, used a stack. Let's go over here. I used a stack of bricks underneath the leaf spring. Came out here, pushed down hard with my knee here because this bolt uh, was not going to line up. We had a, quite a bit of gap. And you have to stretch that spring in order to get the shackle to line back up again. So if you can bend, if you can put a... Uh, some kind of fulcrum on the ground down there um, and and you want to do this on the end of the leaf spring on this end and not on that end of the leaf spring because if you start prying over here there's no weight on this end of the frame to hold the body down but you've still got quite a bit of weight over there so when you start really cranking down right here you're lifting up over there but it's not going to lift it up off that jack stand uh, if you if you don't put a whole lot of weight on it so that's that's just something to think about but you can use that as a fulcrum uh, I had to use another little piece of wood it wasn't quite tall enough you just have to play with that and figure out exactly where it is and then you just need enough of it to get it back down where you can get that bolt to line back up because when we first I first started doing that you know I was probably a good uh, two inches away but you but you have to be able to hit you uh, stretch that spring back out in order to get it hooked back up when I run a chalk line actually from the gap in that up here to my frame because these narrow little leaf springs here are actually offset but if I come back up to my frame rail I look straight down the frame rail man it's perfect it lines up perfect with the shackle that's already there so I think what I'm going to do the easiest thing to do is to do is to cut these shackles out front and back these shackles out and cut the front shackles out and get a shackle just to get a relocation kit and new leaf springs and just rehang all of that in there um, using that existing that existing steel there and just let the new leaf spring go underneath there like it's supposed to and then I can use a lowering blocks or whatever I need to on regular traditional u-bolts uh, um, that would mount to that and I think that's the way I want to do it I'm still kind of thinking about it but I think that's the way I'm going to do it but really when you get it in here and you start mocking it up and you can kind of look at it you can see it in three dimensions and it just makes more sense than on paper so that's what we're looking at okay now it's time to pull this transmission uh, 9 16 bolts
Okay, folks, got a lot done today. I'm going to clean my hands while I talk. Um, got the transmission out, got the drive shaft out. Uh, the transmission was a little trickier than I thought. There's not a lot holding it in. There are two bolts on the front of the transmission that come in um, from the rear, but then you have to take the dust pan off of the back of the bottom of the bell housing. Uh, it's a couple little flat screws in the bottom and two or three more that hold it up in the bottom. And once you get that off, you can see that the, the lower bolts that hold the transmission to the bell housing mount through from the back side. And that wasn't that big a deal. I took these bolts off of the bell housing I just put those, I'm just going to put those back because the bell housing is going to stay, stay placed. Actually, I won't. I'm going to pull the whole thing because I've got to have a clutch made. Uh, there's a guy in downtown Nashville uh, down by the racetrack, apparently, that's pretty good at just, uh, you take him your clutch and tell him what transmission that you're going to run, how you want it, and he'll make you one almost while you wait, uh, which is pretty cool. I'll put a link to him uh, later on in the video. Um, the, uh, the transmission uh, looks like it was in good shape. Uh, the throwout bearing that's in here uh, is something that I think we'll be reusing, uh, the same throwout bearing, uh, because it really kind of goes with the lever arm for the clutch pedal itself. I'm not sure uh, that those things would be interchangeable uh, otherwise. But we got that out. I will say this, there is no rear motor mounts for um, this car. There's just two motor mounts in the front and the motor is heavily weighted to the back end. So you will have to get something underneath the back side of the motor to hold it up because the, 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 all of the weight of it sits on top of the transmission mount, which is right here. Um, so we'll clean this up and then I've got the new plate. I'm going to put that in place uh, just to kind of mock it in here and see how it lines up. And then I've got to figure out, uh, I'll have to make something uh, for a transmission mount that will sit about right there and it will depend on you know how high it sits once it once I put the T5 in and we see that all right just want to show you two clutch disc and pressure plate are out there are six bolts that hold that to the flywheel uh, you got to get those out it helps if you've got a little cheater bar and you put a couple of screws or bolts into your harmonic balancer on the front to use it to kind of lever around you can you can crank those guys around uh, what you do because you're old transmission is going to be on a 10 spline and the new transmission this is my buddy Chris uh, who taught me this deal you need to go make a new clutch and uh, I think it's called Tennessee clutch I'll put a link to it on the video but um, this is the 10 spline that came out the old transmission and what we do is we take that to the guy and he will make a new clutch uh, plate uh, and assembly, but he will make it with this, I believe that's a 14 spline for the new transmission. So we'll have to go make that. And, and Chris says the guy's very reasonable. I think he charged him, I mean, it was under a hundred dollars to custom make a clutch literally while he waited. He said he made it in about like 45 minutes or less. Um, but the guys down there by the fairgrounds and just builds like race clutches all the time for guys. A lot of these transmissions, see, they still use these, uh, or they use a lot of similar transmissions in the dirt track racing and the small, uh, small car racing where you only need like a three speed. Okay, so this is the adapter plate. It's uh, ish three quarters of an inch thick, uh, solid aluminum. The guy machines these specifically for this purpose. It's for making a 235 uh, inline six bell housing compatible with a uh, T5 transmission. $165 online, I guess. So you'll see bolt pattern, bolt pattern. It's gonna bolt uh, right on to the back of that bell housing. Um, so those bolts will go in. He also sends you all the hardware that you need. Or did I do it right the first time? Yeah, like that. So it bolts right on the front of the T5 transmission. So all the bolts will line up countersunk. So that's perfect. And then uh, what I've learned is that the uh, th this spline is about exactly three quarters of an inch too long so a lot of the guys when they were first doing this they were trimming these down and, and filing this 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 splines back a little bit just to make them fit um, but this takes care of all of that you don't have to do any of that you put this plate in and all of this is going to bolt right up to that 235 so that's perfect so uh, i'll get this thing set in place um, and uh, we'll just kind of keep keep working along
Well, all right. So the sun's going down. It's getting cold again. We got a lot done. All right. That's the uh, new rear end that's in the car. Not mounted, but just kind of in place. We got the uh, old rear end and the drive shaft or the torque tube, as it were, out. Uh, that is the old transmission right there. It is out. The uh, clutch assembly and pressure plate is out. And let's see, what else? We have kind of set the transmission in. I know that this cross member is not going to work. I think somebody makes a, uh, a bolt in something where I can cut the center of that out and bolt something in that will match up to the T5. I'm going to do some Googling tonight when I get get back inside and I'm gonna check all that out um, I've got all the tools put up I've got the transmission back here in the shop again uh, my old back is tired because I'm 51 and I don't need to be moving all this heavy stuff I tried to use as much uh, leverage and machinery as I could uh, but that was a lot of work for a Saturday and uh, it's a good day here at our dad's garage the kids are at mom's um, so they kind of missed it. There's not a lot little kids can do um, on this kind of piece though. Everything weighs so much that I'd hate to have them around um, just to the danger of them being around all of this stuff. So uh, there's a lot of things in our dad's garage. It's just gonna be dad's, uh, dad's garage. And the uh, kids can be a part of it uh, at some point later down the road. Um, they really like the fun parts. They like the riding in the cars and the going to the shows and the, they like that part. They don't really love the, the work yet. Uh, but uh, later on, they will, and that'll be cool. Uh, anyway, we got a lot done today. Uh, the, uh, the new 53 project is coming along pretty good. And I will sign off with that.